Well, the style of the Burns block is uh, it has several different kind of styles that are encompassed in it. Uh, it's uh, what is known as Italianate uh, in part, and uh, the elements that let you know that it's Italianate are the fact that it has round-headed windows on the second story, and that's related to uh, the Roman arch, and uh, which they were Italians, of course, the Romans, and also that at the top of the building, the uh, cornice, uh, which kind of caps the top of it there, uh, had, sticks way out, and that was typical of the Italianate building, that they had these really big cornices. And uh, the other style that it is kind of uh, represents is what's known as the Beaux Arts Classical Revival style. So the Beaux Arts style typically had uh, a very kind of a picturesque uh, skyline. It was uh, built by uh, Pat Burns, Patrick Burns, and he was a uh, person from uh, Alberta who came into the Kootenays uh, during the time of the Silver Rush uh, when all the miners were here and uh, it was his business to uh, bring cattle. Essentially it was a kind of a big giant butcher shop in a way and that's how uh, he made his money off of the mining boom uh, all across uh, Western Canada by supplying uh, meat to the miners and the mining camps. Again, uh, from the information that I have, there were actually uh, three different architects that were involved in it, and uh, two of them were, I think, uh, actually from the Nelson area, I think Hodgins, and uh, he uh, designed several buildings in Nelson. Uh, there was also uh, a local architect named Alexander Carey, and he had a hand in it. Uh, but the most famous architect uh, that was involved in it was uh, F.M. Rattenberry, who uh, also designed uh, the British Columbia Parliament buildings. And Rattenberry uh, also designed you know, two other buildings in Nelson, the Courthouse Building and also the Bank of Montreal. And I guess the way the whole Nelson revitalization project happened, it was sort of in stages. And uh, the first thing that happened was uh, a group uh, of architectural students came into the community and they uh, did what was known as an inventory where they went all around up and down Baker Street as well as some of the residential areas and they you know sort of cataloged the buildings and they had a classification system where uh, they determined you know sort of based on uh, you know how how well the building was preserved and if there was a particularly important architect or if the building had a particularly important role in the community uh, they would determine uh, you know, they had a kind of an A, B, C category, so uh, A was the highest category and uh, the Burns Building was listed as a Class A building. In the 1970s there was a little bit of a movement where uh, things that were kind of considered to be, you know, like Alpine or Bavarian, that was a sort of a, a theme that a lot of communities went with. So most of the changes that had been pasted over the top of the Burns Building had a kind of a, uh, an alpine look to it, so uh, it was, uh, you know, kind of like plywood that had boards on it that looked like, you know, that kind of crisscross uh, uh, timbering that you think of when you think of sort of alpine stuff, and white stucco, and uh, I guess what was kind of goofy about it was that they put that alpine stuff uh, like, you know, over this really beautiful architectural detailing. And one of the kind of funniest things I thought, or stupidest things, was that on the lower portion of the building they actually uh, put plywood over the real stone that was on the building and then covered it with a plastic stone. <laughs> and when I first saw the building, you know, that stone had been broken and looked like looked horrible, you know. So uh, basically, I guess the work that was done on that on the Burns block was to remove uh, all of that Bavarian fake stucco stuff and uh, then we uh, used a, uh, a kind of a chemical, mild chemical detergent to uh, clean, clean the bricks and things like that and it got a, a fresh coat of paint. I think, I, I guess the thing that I always like about any of the Victorian architecture is just the uh, decorative elements on it, right? So um, if you look up at the t near the top you'll see there's uh, uh, some really beautiful, like most of the decorations on the building are in what's known as terracotta, which is a, a high-fired clay, kind of an exterior clay product that a lot of things were uh, built out of and their decorations were made out of back in the day. 
So uh, there's this beautiful sort of, you know, swirly Renaissance Baroque looking kind of detailing. Um, you know, there are those elements right in the center that uh, you mentioned or noticed the, the, the bull's head and the date of 1899 when the building was built. And of course, the, the bull's head related to the, uh, you know, the cattle that uh, Mr. Burns marketed 